Okay, we are going live. So I hope everyone can hear me and see me. Uh, welcome everyone to our next episode of um, Idea Statica webinar series. Today's dedicated to a concrete topic about how to solve critical parts in shear walls. So today we will deal with uh, mostly with the concrete structures and with our detail app and our today's presenters are product engineers from Idea Statica, Vlastimil Konečný and myself, Jan Kubíček. Uh, hello Vlastik, if you want to say a few words, you can go on. Hello, welcome everybody. I'm looking forward to presenting today. Perfect, thank you very much. And uh, as usual, uh, for our webinars, we use a go to webinar platform. So for those not familiar with this one, um, all attendees are muted by default, but don't be afraid. You can ask questions during the whole webinar in the question panel and our specialists uh, try to answer everything immediately or in other case, um, if we can't do it during the webinar, you will get your answers um, into the email inbox. Um, what this will be about today. So our today's agenda will be some brief overview about the theory background, uh, about these uh, critical parts of concrete walls, some introduction to the topic, then Vlastik uh, show us how to correctly model the uh, part of the structure in Idea Statica Detail app. And we will go through the uh, result for a part and uh, then brief summary of uh, what we found out it's in this topic. And yeah, we have prepared uh, several uh, polls for you. So we could start with the first one because we are interested in i'm not sure if you can see it i hope you can we are interested in uh, how do you deal with deep beams or beams uh, for example with openings so the first option you are using 1d member models and the beam theory the second one is linear analysis um, modeling beams and sub parts the third option, Stratton Dye method, or the fourth one is a nonlinear analysis. We are getting answers. Yeah, it's quite nicely divided. So I will let, let it open for a few more seconds. Yeah, interesting results. Okay, a few more coming, and we can close it okay so the results are yeah as you can see the third option strata tie method is a winner uh, what do you think plastic could we expect this one i would say so yeah it's one of the most commonly used methods so it's not that surprising for me. And nonlinear analysis almost never, or under 10%. So, uh, what do you think about this one? Well, uh, hopefully, after today's webinar, the results will be different with uh, much more users using the nonlinear analysis for their solution. But we'll see. Yeah. So, we hope we can make something about this and uh, increase the number at least at by four or five percent, let's say. Okay, uh, we can go on. So um, we can start with the theory part and I will move the presenter to Vlastik. Okay, thank you. So I'll turn my camera off. I will hide the results and I will take the presenter. Okay, so I hope the presentation is visible. Yes, 
it is. Perfect. So let's start. Uh, at first, uh, I would like to, uh, Yanko, can I ask you to mute yourself? Yeah, sure. At first, I would like to uh, focus on why we should even pay attention to shear walls. Uh, we should pay attention to shear walls because it's essential element of a structure, not only a concrete structure, but steel structures and timber structures as well. And what is their functionality? They prevent uh, large lateral deflections because they transfer the majority of the horizontal load. And because of that, they decrease the moments at the foundations. So they are really uh, needful for the successful design of a concrete structure, especially when dealing with high rise buildings. And why we should pay attention to coupling beams? Because they, uh, they have two major roles. The first uh, major role is that they uh, connect independent elements. Uh, if we do not have a model with uh, coupling beams included, then these two shear, then the shear wall will be divided to separate shear walls, to two separate shear walls, and they will act independently. So the first shear wall will transfer the majority of the horizontal load. They will uh, they will move independently. So then the results uh, won't be satisfying. That's why it's uh, really important to include these coupling walls because they can uh, significantly increase the momentum of resistance. And the other major role is that uh, coupling beams can act as a source of energy dissipation during extreme stress and uh, for example, in this case, we're talking about earthquake where the building uh, has to be resilient uh, against uh, such a huge amount of pressure. And uh, because uh, the structure ought to be resilient, it cannot be too rigid. So uh, otherwise, if, if the structure is too rigid, then it will crack uh, at the wall pier and then the, the building will collapse. So the flexibility uh, under this extraordinary pressure means that uh, the structure uh, is supposed to be able to maintain the essential structural integrity under pressure when dealing with, uh, for example, earthquake. So these are the two major roles of coupling beams in structure. And when we should uh, use advanced methods with, when dealing with coupling beams, at first we need to distinguish whether the beam is uh, a be uh, sorry a beam or whether it is a deep beam, and it's uh, dependent on the length to height uh, ratio. If this length to height ratio of the coupling beam is higher than two, then it is safe to use uh, beam theory because the Navier, uh, Bernoulli Navier hypothesis of plane strain distribution is valid. Then we can use this beam theory and the classical calculation according to the code, for example. But if the ratio of the length to height is uh, lower or equals the number two, then we ought to use more advanced method. For example, in our case, uh, CSFM method, which is uh, which means a compatible stress field method, which is method implemented in the detail application. Or we uh, we should use more advanced method every time we deal with a structure with, for example, openings or I don't know sudden change of uh, cross-section geometry, or basically whenever we want to see more detailed results, whenever we want to have uh, better control over the structure, and whenever we want to have like this better understanding of the real behavior of the structure. Uh, in the previous slide, I've mentioned uh, discontinuity regions or uh, regions with, for example, openings. 
each structure can be divided to B regions and D regions. In these B regions, the Bervenulinavir hypothesis of plane strain distribution is valid. Hence, we can use the classical calculation according to the code. The beam theory is valid. We are, we are okay using this sim simplified uh, calculation methods. On the other hand, uh, when dealing with discontinuity regions, which can be, for example, frame joints, uh, areas with point loads, area with sudden change of cross-section geometry, uh, areas with, uh, with corbels, with openings, areas uh, near supports. In these areas, the bernoulli nivier hypothesis of plane strain distribution is not valid, and we ought to use more advanced methods. And one of the most commonly used method is uh, equivalent truss method, so the so-called uh, stratten tie method. And uh, while it is perfectly okay and safe to use such a method, the, the main disadvantage is that uh, it can be really time consuming and sometimes the results are way more conservative than using, for example, other methods such as uh, CSFM method. And so it's perfectly okay to, to use the Ratentai method, but uh, you will spend uh, much more time during the modeling process, during the, the building the, the whole uh, equivalent truss, and then you will receive, in some cases, uh, conservative results. And uh, for dealing with discontinuity regions, that's why the detail, the idea statica detail application was developed. So you can spend much less time in the modeling process, and you will you will receive more accurate results in uh, in, for example, minutes. And now I would like to tell you about the practical example which I have prepared for today. So we'll be dealing with a coupling beam with the length of 2.6 meters. It has a rectangular cross section with the width of 300 millimeters and the height of 600 millimeters. We will use the concrete grade C3037 and B500B for reinforcement. And the coupling beam is weakened by a rectangular opening with uh, dimensions 350 millimeters times 200 millimeters in the left uh, left part of the coupling beam. So this is our today's practical example. How to build the model in the Idea Statica detail applications? Uh, application. There are several options how to do that. But I've uh, pointed. I would like to point out the three options which I have selected, and uh, which I would recommend to to use. So, the first option is to do a cutoff of the beam, where we will focus uh, really on the coupling beam, and let's say that this beam is not weakened by any opening. So. And if we really want to focus on the coupling beam only, then it's perfectly okay and fine to use such a model. Uh, you can model it as a beam with trimmed ends, where you set the trans the sun van transfer zone uh, to the embedded uh, walls uh, or to the area where, where the walls uh, embedded the, the coupling beam. The second option, and this will be the option which we will use today, is to build uh, the model with the coupling beam and uh, only cut off of, uh, of the walls. And uh, why we do that? Again, if you want to focus really on the coupling beam, but you want to like include the real stiffness of the structure, you want to uh, have more realistic behavior of the structure, and you don't want to deal with the calculations of, of, of uh, stiffnesses, 
when uh, when setting the, the supports so you can instead model this cutoff of the walls and you will simulate the the real boundary conditions and yet you won't focus on the on the results in the walls and the third option is to model the coupling beam including uh, the walls and uh, if you are interested in how to do such a such a model uh, there's all, already been a webinar dedicated to such a topic. So if you go to our webpage, www.ideastatica.com to the support and uh, download section and under webinars, you can find the webinar which was dedicated uh, to uh, design of walls and deep beams where uh, my colleague Lukasz Ryczek uh, like thoroughly dis uh, evaluated how to properly uh, input the loads to the model in the Idea Statica detail application. Okay, so this was uh, all from the theory area. And now I would like to present you how to model the structure in the detail application. So I will jump out of the presentation. I'll open the main Idea Statica application and I will build the model in the latest version of the software, which is 22.1.1.1451. So I'll open the detail application. and I'll click on the new project. The discontinuity region wizard pops up and I need to uh, set the main uh, informations regarding the model. So we will use Eurocode as our design code, but if you want to, or if you need to, we have ACI implemented into the detail application as well. The concrete gray will be uh, C 3037 reinforcement grade B, 500B, and uh, we will leave the concrete cover value as 25 millimeters. And we don't need to bother with pre-stressing since it's not a pre-stress structure. So right now I will I'll select one of the predefined templates. So I will go to beams and select, for example, the first one, the end support with trimmed end of the beam. So I will receive uh, the geometry of the structure, which is set by default. And right now I'll modify it uh, to our wanted model. So I'll delete this, uh, the support and I'll modify the properties of the beam. I change the cross section to rectangular one with the height of 600 millimeters. The width is 300 millimeters. That's okay. I will set the length as a 2.6 meters and I will set that the beam is not trimmed at all. And I want to move the center of a beam to the uh, beginning of the local coordinate system. So I will set the X position as negative 1.3 meters. This is not mandatory. It's It's really optional and it's really if you if you want to uh, have the the beginning of the beam at the beginning of the local coordinate system, this is really up to it's it's not mandatory for for building such a structure. And right now I need to define uh, the part of the walls. So I'll click on the blue plus button. I'll select beam once again, and I'll modify the parameters. So I need to change the cross section and I'll set the height as a 2000 millimeters. The width remains the same. The length of the wall will be three meters. It will be trimmed at the beginning. And right now I need to set the correct position. So the master element will be a mass uh, element M1, 
if you are not sure which element is which, you can either point your mouse cursor to it or you can turn on the names in the top ribbon. So the master element is M1. I'll set the master point as eight and the insert point as six. So this is the master point on the master element and the insert point is on the other beam, on the other beam. And I will change the position to zero. And right now I can copy the already modeled beam and set it to the other side of the coupling beam. So I'll copy element M2 and I just need to change the trimmed end. It won't be at the beginning anymore, but it will be at the end. And I change the master point to six and insert point to eight. And we have it correctly set to the other side of the coupling beam. And uh, right now I'll set the, the opening. So I'll hit the blue plus button once again, select the opening. The shape is uh, indeed rectangular, so I won't change it. This, I'll just override the width as uh, 0 0.35 meters. The height is uh, 0 0.2 meters and I need to set the position. So I'll change the master point to one in 0 0.21 as well. The X position will be 0 0.5 meters and the Z position is 0. 15 meters. I can check whether it is okay. It is, and it is like I've shown you in the presentation. So this is all from the geometry part and I can move to the uh, load setting. So we have two load cases set by default and three combinations, one for the ULS check and the other one, uh, the other two are for SLS checks. One is a characteristic combination and the other one is quasi-permanent combination. Uh, I'll, you, uh, I'll add another load case. I'll change the type of the second one as permanent load case. And right now I'll explain why I, uh, I did that. So let's say we have this uh, structure modeled it in some third party FEA software. So I immediately know the exact value of internal forces at the beginning and at the end of the coupling beam. So right now, if I want to set the loads, the easiest way how to do that is uh, read this internal forces from your global FEA model and apply these values of internal forces to your model. You don't need to set the load impulses and uh, do the combinations anymore because you have already done that in, in your global model. So you don't need to dupli uh, duplicate the, the workflow. You can just take the values of internal forces, set them at the beginning and the software will do the rest for you. So the first uh, load case will simulate or to the first load case, I will input the internal forces uh, with design values uh, of internal forces taken from the combination for uh, ULS. So I'll go to load impulses. I'll delete all of the predefined uh, loads. And right now I can move to internal forces and I need to set the correct values of internal forces. So the, for, the, for the first load case, I'll change the member to M1 and I'll add the values for the actual force as negative 100 kilonewtons, shear force negative 250 kilonewtons, and the moment will be uh, 325 kilonewton meters. And I can see that once I've defined the values, then the internal forces diagrams uh, 
are shown and I can easily, easily check whether I set the correct position of internal forces because the, the set internal forces are highlighted with this orange uh, line and uh, with this orange uh, color of, of the text. So I can immediately check that uh, I've set the correct position of the internal forces. Yeah, so these values which I uh, input to this table are shown here on the right side in the graphical uh, window. So I will do the rest uh, for, uh, for the rest of the load cases. So for the second load case, I'll change the member to M1 as well. And I'll set or input the values for the characteristic combination taken from the global model. So the value of the uh, actual force will be negative 70 kilonewtons, shear force negative 175 kilonewtons, and bending moment 227.5 kilometers. And again, everything is okay. So I can move uh, to the last load case. And these values are for uh, the quasi permanent combination, so actual force 60 kilonewtons, shear force 150 kilonewtons, and bending moment 195 kilonewton meters. Uh, so I just set the values of internal forces for each combination, and right now I need to change the uh, combination uh, rule in the detail application. So how do I do that? I just simply click on the blue plus button. I'll overwrite the factor for the first load case, which will be for the ULS check as a one, because uh, I've taken the design values of internal forces from the global model and the rest I will set as zeros. And I'll do the same for the rest of the load cases. Right, I can check it, everything is fine. So I can move uh, to the other part, which is the reinforcement input. And before I uh, input the reinforcement, I would like to, uh, I would like to mention that before you do that, and uh, let's say you are not sure how to place the, the reinforcement, uh, how to input, what is the optimal position of the reinforcement in the model. For those who are not sure about the position of the reinforcement, we have two design tools implemented. The first one is linear analysis. So it runs the linear analysis and it immediately shows you the, the red parts and blue parts in the model. So the red parts, uh, they simulate the material in compression or the principal stresses. And the blue parts uh, represents the, the parts in tension. And the same goes for the topology optimization. It's again, it's a linear solution, but it uses the FEM uh, method. And uh, basically what it does, it, it's an iterative process. At the first point, uh, it calculates the strain energy for 100% of the volume of the concrete. Then it derives this uh, value and it applies it to, to the structure. And uh, during this iterative process, it does this once again and again and again. And during this, it removes the parts uh, of the structure from the places where the material, where the concrete is not necessary. And it removes these parts uh, and uh, place them in parts where it's really necessary to, to have the material. So at the end, it will show you the equivalent thrust model, which may remind you the stratton time method, but it's not really stratton time method uh, because it's a totally different approach, but uh, it shows you the parts of the structure in tension as well as the parts of the structure in compression. 
So you can see the number of iterations, the effective volume of the structure, and the relative change of energy. So we will receive the, the results. Once there is such a small amount of change in the material, in the structure, the iterative uh, analysis stops, the iterative process of the analysis stops, and it shows you the, the results. Right, so these blue parts in the structure, they represent the, the concrete intention, red parts represent uh, the concrete in compression. Uh, so in reality, if it is possible to build such a model, we can exclude the white parts of the structure in the real life structure. So it could look like this, like the equivalent truss model. So this is helpful for those, as I have already mentioned, for those who are not uh, sure where to place, uh, where to put the, the reinforcement, or if you want to optimize your model and for example, save material, save the reinforcement for those, this method is, uh, is the best uh, tool how to do that. So I'll go to the reinforcement input and yeah, before I input the reinforcement, you can have the uh, topology optimization visualization turned on during the modeling process, or you can easily turn it off. So I'll turn it off and I'll delete all of the predefined uh, reinforcement and I will set the new reinforcement for my purposes. So I'll click on the blue plus button. I'll select group of bars. I want to have uh, 14 layers of reinforcement with the distance of 150 millimeters. So at first I'll set the reinforcement for the left part of the wall, then I'll copy it and set it to the other uh, side of the wall. And then I'll uh, set the reinforcement for the coupling beam. So I'll change the diameter to 12 millimeters and I want to have two bars in a layer. I need to set the proper anchorage type. So at the beginning will be the continuous bar because the reinforcement in reality continues to other parts of, of the wall. And uh, anchorage type at the end, I'll select as a perfect bond. Since this is a completely 2D solution where the elements are walls, uh, we need to simulate the, the bondage of, of the reinforcement bars. So Usually in reality, we would uh, add the U-shape reinforcement at the ends of, of the walls, at the edges of the opening. But uh, since this is a 2D solution, it's not possible to do that. So we select the, the proper anchorage type to simulate the real behavior of the structure. Yeah, and right now I need to set the master element as M2 and that's it. So. Right now, I'll uh, set the vertical reinforcement. So once again, I'll select the group of bars and uh, I'll change the number of layers to 20. Distance remains the same. And I will set the encourage type at the end as continuous as well. And the edge will be on the right. And that's it, yeah. So right now I can copy the reinforcement and set it to the other element. Oh, sorry. So this is okay. And I just need to change the, the encourage types. Yeah, like that. And it's okay. And I will do the same for the vertical reinforcement. So I'll change the master element. I'll change the edge to left. Need to set the bar distance and that's it. Yeah. Right now I need to uh, set the reinforcement for the coupling beam. 
So I will use another group of bars. I want to have only one layer. I will change the diameter to 20 millimeters and I want to have four bars in the layer. I'll change the anchorage type at the beginning and at the end uh, to the uh, basic anchorage. I'll select the master element, the bottom edge, and I want to extend the reinforcement to, to the walls. So I need to set the correct position on edge. I'll select this whole length and extension, and I'll select the, the extension. And I set the value of the extension to 1200 millimeters on both uh, sides. I'll copy it and set the edge, stop edge. And right now I need to uh, set the reinforcement for other edges of the coupling beam. So I'll add a new group of bars once again. I'll change the number of layers to three. The distance will be 125 millimeters. The diameter is 16 millimeters. And uh, yeah, I'll change the edge to the bottom. I'll change the extension at the beginning as well at the end. And I need to change uh, yeah, our distance and change the concrete cover. I want to use user value to move uh, the reinforcement to the correct position. So I'll set the cover as 166 millimeters. If I want to check the reinforcement, the positions of the reinforcement in the top ribbon, I can select the real 3D visualization. It's really a visualization. As I have already said, the model is completely in 2D. So this is just for the visualization purposes. I can check whether the position of the reinforcement is OK. I can see it is. So I can go back to the model and uh, yeah, I forgot to add uh, like this additional uh, reinforcement at the edges of, of the walls. So I'll do that. I'll add another group of bars. I want to have uh, two layers with the distance 150 millimeters. The diameter is 12 millimeters, two bars in a layer. Encourage type is continuous bar. It's on uh, M2 element from the right. I'll change the position on the edge and I'll set the reservoir value as 100 millimeters. So I'll copy it and set it to the other element from the left and the distance. And that's it. All right. So right now I need to set the stirrups for the coupling beam and the reinforcement around openings. So I'll select uh, the cages part and group of stirrups. I want to have the diameter of stirrups as 14 millimeters. They are on coupling beam element M1. That's okay. And I just change the distances. So 75, 4 times 100, 11 times 150, and 4 times 100. You can check it. It's OK. And you can see that at this part, uh, it doesn't add the stirrups. It's because there is a minimum value of the stirrup length. And the value is set to 100 millimeters by default, but you can always change it in the settings. So I'll go to the settings and I'll change the minimum length of the stirrup branch to 50 millimeters. And if I go back to reinforcement, you can see that the software automatically added 
uh, the stirrups to the bottom edge of the coupling beam as well. So right now I'll add the reinforcement around opening. I'll use the template for that. I'll turn on the diagonal reinforcement. I don't want to have it there. I'll change the diameter to 16 millimeters. I want to have two bars in a layer with the distance of 40 millimeters. And I want to have only two layers. And I'll set the angle reach length to 400 millimeters. And that's it. Okay. So the reinforcement is set. And uh, right now I can move to the check part. And uh, I've prepared a, a model which is already analyzed. So I'll skip the calculation process. It'll take uh, about two minutes. So just to save time, I'll skip, uh, I'll skip the, the analysis part and I'll show you immediately the, the results. Yeah, so it is exactly the same results. What I did, I just hit the calculate button in the top ribbon. I wait, uh, I waited for, for example, two minutes and uh, I have received the, the results. So in the first section, there is this uh, summary tab with all of the results for ULS check as well as for the SLS check. So you can go uh, to the summary checks one by one and we can immediately see that the stress limitation check is not satisfying, it's overutilized and the utilization of the stress limitation check is 200 and 14 millimeters. I will speak about that, what can we do about it, but uh, let me present you the thorough results one by one at first. So I'll move to the strength part. This is the uh, ULS check where we, uh, where we compare the real stresses uh, to the limit value of stresses. The, it goes for concrete as well as for the reinforcement or it applies for concrete as well as for the reinforcement. And we can either turn on the visualization of the ratio or we can turn on the visualization of the real stresses in concrete as well as in the reinforcement. And I can see that the, the highest utilization of the reinforcement or the biggest value of stress in a reinforcement is in a part which is not uh, like interesting for me because I want to focus on a coupling beam. So I can use the possibility of uh, displaying the thorough results in the detail application. So I can easily just point the mouse cursor on wanted area of the reinforcement and I can immediately see based on the elements, what is the actual value of tensile stress in reinforcement, the same applies for the uh, compressive stress in reinforcement. So I can check that the stresses in the reinforcement are okay. And exactly the same applies uh, for, for the concrete part. I can turn on the visualization of the mesh. And when I point the mouse cursor on wanted place, I can check the exact value of, of the stresses all over the structure. Yeah, I just wanted to show you that you can even turn on the direction of principal stresses. So you can, you can really check it that it is as it was shown in the topology optimization and the linear analysis. These are the real directions of principal stresses in the structure. So I can move to the anchorage check. Again, I can check the ratio of the anchorage length that it's almost 100%, but it's still satisfying. The results are satisfying. I can even turn on the visualization of anchorage stresses. And again, I can uh, see the results in any place, in any area of the uh, beam I want. So right now I, uh, I go to stress limitation check and I can see the unsatisfying result with the ratio or the utilization as 214%. 
So what I can do, I can turn off the visualization of the reinforcement and I'll change the results from the ratio to real stresses in the structure. And I can see that there is a stress peak in the corner of the elements in the sharp reentrant corner. And the stress peak uh, is its value, the, the value of stress is 25 and 29 megapascals. So I can use the possibility of uh, seeing the thorough results on the structure. And I can see that it, it is really the stress peak in the corner of these three elements, which are surrounding the, the sharp corner. And if I use the uh, thorough results, I can see that the even at the first element, if I show the detailed results, so in this place, which is approximately, I don't know, four centimeters from the from the edge of the coupling beam, the value of a stress in concrete is 12 megapascals, which is lower than the limit value of stress. So in our case, we can totally neglect the stress peak because as we can see, the, the value of stress in the structure decreases from, from the sharp uh, corner into the structure. So even at the first element, the value of stress is lower at the other part, uh, at the other edge of the uh, first element, the value of stress is lower than the limit value. So we can neglect it. And uh, why this is happening, I'll jump back to uh, the presentation. And it's not uh, it's not issue only with the detail application, but this is uh, this is issue with basically every application which uses the FEM method. So in each FEM application where there is a sharp uh, corner, there will be the stress peak. And how to avoid the stress peaks? Uh, even as I have just shown you. Uh, either if, if, as I have just shown you, you can uh, you can evaluate the results. You can you can use the possibility of seeing the thorough results, and you can decide whether it is really a stress peak or a stress concentration in the model. So either you can neglect it or just uh, work with the model uh, a bit more. The other option is uh, to uh, substitute the sharp corner model with uh, the model with fillet radius. So you model the fillet radius instead of sharp corner, and this will refine the mesh, and uh, it will help you with with the issues of stress peaks. And uh, there are of course uh, other options how to how to deal with uh, these uh, stress peaks but these are meant for more advanced and uh, scientific uh, software such as for example Athena where you locally refine the mesh surrounding like the only where you do only the local change of the mesh uh, etc so this is what you can do and how you can deal with these uh, stress peaks i'll jump back to the model and I'll show you the rest of the checks. So this is the Craig with check, where I can see the exact value of Craig with all over the structure. So again, the critical uh, value of the check is in the area where it's not interesting for us. So again, once again, I can use the thorough uh, results and I can see that the highest value of Craig width is approximately 0 0.19 millimeters. If you want to change the critical value or the limit value of a Craig width, you can do that in the top ribbon under the Craig width. You can overwrite the limit value to whatever value you need to use for your design and code check. 
and last but not least the deflection check this is a non-linear deflection including uh, creep and you can uh, display the results for short-term effects long-term effects uh, the immediate effects uh, caused by applying the variable load and the total value of deflection and if you go to auxiliary you can turn on the deformed uh, shape of the structure uh, so you can immediately see how the structure will behave in in reality so once you are satisfied with the results of the analysis you can go to bill of material where the software will show you the brief reinforcement bar table also all of the reinforcement which was used in the model the its shapes and uh, you can export this bill of material to dxf file and you can use it for your following drawings of the reinforcement and at the end of the bill of material there's this overview table where the total length total weight of reinforcement and even reinforcement weight per volume unit of concrete is shown so again you can use it for the future purposes of your uh, project and of course after you are done with modeling you can build this uh, detailed report which you can use uh, for which you can include to your documentation you can directly print it from the detail application or you can export it to word document or to the pdf file and of course you can uh, you can uh, select between the brief type of, of report or the detailed report. Yeah, so the brief report, it, it really contains only the most necessary data, while the detailed report, it shows you all types of, of checks, all these nice uh, images of the structure. And you can even uh, do the images of the structure during the modeling process you can save them to the library in the application and then you can apply them and add them to to the report so this was a brief introduction on how to model the structure in the detail application i'll jump to the uh, presentation one more time And I want to do this summary. I would like to uh, once again mention why use CSFM method. So the first and maybe most essential uh, reason why use CSFM method is the time savings. Yeah, while design using a simplified method can uh, take up take six and more hours uh, building this model in the csfm method uh, can take you approximately one hour and you are done you have uh, you have all of the important and uh, uh, results and including all of the necessary and important checks the other major reason is that you can save the material on some examples we have verified that you can save up to 30 percent of material when using the detail application for evaluating the structures and last but not least you will receive all of the uh, necessary checks not only for the ultimate limit state but also all of the checks for the serviceable limit state which you won't receive when using, for example, the simplified uh, Stratentai method. So this was the uh, this was the short summary, and uh, I believe that's all from my side today. So I would like to pass the word to Janko to lead you through the rest of the presentation. Okay, thank you. I hope you can uh, hear me and see my screen. Hopefully. 
Um, yeah, it looks like uh, it's quite interesting topic because of uh, the audience we have here, a nice number of attendees and uh, quite a lot of questions still coming in. So we're trying to cover these. And yeah, we have another poll prepared for you. I just wanted to mention that um, it, this presentation, very nicely prepared, was mostly about our uh, detail app, which is great tool capable of things uh, not many others can do and some some of these features can't be done anywhere else and we are still looking for the limits of uh, structure members um, maybe tasks uh, we we can do there and it looks like the limitations are mostly on side of uh, creativity and imagination of structural engineer and this coupling beam uh, coupling beams are just uh, one specific example of what what else can be done here so yeah thank you very much for the presentation i would jump to the second poll we have prepared for you so i hope you can see it now yes the question is uh, would you use the idea statica detail app for your future projects maybe after this uh, presentation this overview of oh, what is capable of. So the first option is yes in the most of the designs, the second one yes in some designs, and the third and fourth. Okay, not so many coming there. That's great for us. So rather not or absolutely not. Yeah, the, the votes are still coming. So several more seconds before closing. Thank you for your voting here. Okay, so now I I will close it uh, and share the results. So I would say it's a great result for us. So yes, in some designs, it's, it's a great a winner. Yes, in most of the designs in 20% of votes. So Plastic, what do you think about this result? Yeah, this these results are great and i'm more than happy to see that uh, we we somehow <laughs> like uh, have an impact on you and then you will start or if you are not already using the detail application that you will start and use it for your future project because it can be a great tool with uh, like this great added value Yes, I think also that this webinar could uh, improve the, the awareness of uh, detail possibilities. Okay, uh, what I have here, um, yeah, it's mostly Q&A and uh, quite a lot of questions here, but I've selected two of them, probably um, interesting also for others. So the first one uh, could be uh, in, the, in the results you've presented, there was uh, some uh, results in the ULS check quite close to 100%. So does it mean that after increasing the load a little bit more, uh, will the, the structure fail or the model fail? Mm -hmm. I think uh, you are talking about uh, the anchorage check, right? So uh, let me take the presenter. So yeah, we can see that the inquiry check is almost 100%. And it doesn't mean that if you increase uh, the value of loads, the uh, structure will collapse. And I'll tell you why. Let me open the web browser and go to our web page. And in supports, uh, support and downloads under the support center, in the learning section, I can go to theoretical background and I can open the theoretical background uh, about the detail application. And the reason why the value of, or, or the, the the reason why the result of the inquiry check is uh, so high is because of the diagram we have implemented in the detail application. So on this diagram, this is the diagram we have implemented in the software for the inquiry check. 
So this is the stress uh, slip uh, diagram. You can see the realistic behavior which simulates, uh, which, uh, which is shown with this dashed uh, curve. And uh, this blue line, it represents the diagram we have in the detail application. So as you can see, you quite easily reach almost 100%, but it doesn't mean that, that the, the inquiry check won't be satisfying after increasing the, the value of, uh, of the loads because there is quite a huge reserve on the horizontal uh, branch of the diagram. So you don't need to be worried if you will receive the, the results of the inquiry checked uh, above 90%. It's, it's not, uh, it, it doesn't mean that the structure will collapse after increasing the, the loads or that there is no reserve in, in your uh, project. Okay, great. I think it's nicely covered, this question. And uh, you can uh, stay with your, uh, with your application open. I'm looking for who's sharing right now. Okay, you should be. Um, there is another question. Um, we could see in your model of, um, of the coupling beam, there are some trimmed ends on both sides of the model. And the question is how these trimmed ends uh, work in the model? What what they mean, how, how it works? Can you explain it a little more? Yes, sure. Uh, so I can go back to the theoretical background and uh, this is how it works when you have the beam with trimmed ends. When having a beam with trimmed ends, uh, at the end of the beam is the so-called Sanvenan zone. And this is the transfer zone, which is uh, really necessary to, I'm sorry, can you mute yourself? Uh, and in, in this zone, you won't receive any results, but it's necessary to have it there. So you, uh, you have the proper transfer of, uh, of the stresses in the structure where we want to see the results. So the model is built that uh, you don't need to you don't need to uh, model the whole structure. You can just cut off part of the structure. There are the streamed end with the transfer zones, and because of the loads you input, the equilibrium is reached. For those who are skilled uh, or who, who are using the connection application. This is basically the same principle as in the connection application. So if you have uh, the structure in equilibrium, you don't need to uh, define the whole structure with both supports, but you can do only the cutoff of the structure where you want to. If you want to learn more about the detail application or if you think that I <laughs> I didn't explain it very well, you can always go to, to the uh, support center on our webpage, www.ideastatica.com under support and downloads in support center in the learning section. And you can uh, like explore the theory behind the compatible stress field method and the Idea Statica detail application. Perfect. Very nicely covered this one. Yeah, there is a, a lot of to study. So feel free to go th through it. And yeah, we are quite uh, out of time right now. So maybe that's it for question. But for those who didn't get the answer yet, uh, don't be afraid. You will get it through email message. I'll get the presenter back. Um, yeah, Q&A and some invitation for the next event. So December the 7th, uh, it will be next connection Wednesday. So the next webinar uh, for steel topics. So yeah, uh, I, I hope we can meet also there. And uh, after our webinar today, there will be a short survey for you. So please um, give us your feedback and maybe some suggestions about the next topics we could use and cover. 
in our webinars, then you will get a recording uh, from this session uh, probably tomorrow. And if you want to try Idea Statica Detail or other apps, uh, you can get your trial version for free on our web page. And as Vlastik showed us already, the support center is a great place for all the important theory and also nice uh, sample projects and examples what we can analyze what we can do for you so that could be it from my side thank you for your attendance and have a nice rest of the week and thank you from my side as well it was the pleasure to present the topic for you today and i hope we will see each other next year in one of our next webinars so thanks again and see you again bye bye bye